Joining me now is Brent Cook. He's senior advisor and founder at Exploration Insights. Always great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Let's talk about the uh, the junior exploration sector, which uh, uh, has been challenging, let's say, for the last several years. Uh, are you seeing any signs that the sentiment is picking up and maybe getting a little bit better and 24 will be a, a stronger year? Yes. Yeah? Um, even at this show, looking around, there's a lot more younger people walking around. Um, I was at Beaver Creek uh, Precious Metal Show in, in September, and one of the one of the discussions, I asked the audience, well, how many of you here for the first time? And probably a third of them raised their hand. And that's a big money conference. So what I'm seeing is uh, funds and other types of investors are uh, looking at the sector. I don't know that much money's coming in yet, but they're looking. And I think there's some real opportunities now, given the, the disconnect between the actual metal prices and the mining equity share. So it's a good time to be getting in. I think this year's going to be better than last inning. All right. Well, that sounds encouraging. Now, uh, as a geologist, uh, I'm traveling around. H have you shifted your focus in terms of what you're looking at and what you, you and your partner, Joe, are, are buying? Uh, or how, how would you describe that, that process right now? We've shifted a bit because, again, we've got this little dichotomy between sh um, commodity values and share prices. And so we've kind of moved up the boot chain into companies that actually have assets as opposed to pure exploration. We've still got some pure exploration, but we're in that, there's such, I think such opportunity there. And the major mining companies are gonna start picking these up. Uh, you look at the production for it, for a while of the majors like Anglo, Barrick, et cetera, and they're down. And they need new things, as well as copper. Uh, Barrick's looking at, at copper desperately. They just put a bunch of money into Hercules Silver. Uh, so it's it's coming. It's coming slowly. But the key, at least at, with Joe and I at Exploration Insights, is if, an ex, if it's a pure exploration company, they better have the money to last a year, at least. Right. Do better. Or a partner in funding the project. All right. The next stage of this conversation getting some ideas from you. Uh, we used to do this years ago at, at, at BNN, so let's keep the tradition going. People always love getting names from you. So one you have is uh, IAD Gold. What's their story? Okay, it's I-80. Oh, I I oh, I-80, got it, okay, yeah. Exactly. I, I've heard of them before, yeah. Inter the interstate running through it. Got it. That's run by uh, you and Downing. And they've got, I think, they are the best junior or small market cap company in Nevada. They've got a number of projects going. Uh, gold up up near um, Winnemucca. Gold and base metals down around uh, Eureka. And that's one that I think someone coming into the U.S. or in Nevada would just acquire that. They've got all the projects they need. Uh, I think great company, great assets. They're drilling out a base metal deposit as well as the gold deposit and their mining is gold deposit, very high grade. One of the companies we interviewed a while ago has a project near uh, I-80, so that's interesting to know. All right, another company we've interviewed before, Arizona Sonoran Copper, that's another idea. Uh, how, how come? What you need in a copper, in any project really, is you need to have security of title, you know, jurisdiction, you need infrastructure, you need water. They've got all that. In Nevada, it's a high-grade oxide deposit for the most part, so the metallurgy is easy. They can produce copper right there, and it doesn't have to send it, to be, send it out to a smelter. Um, they own the land. They own the water. Uh, they don't have to deal with the federal government for the most part. Most of the permits in place. Very smart guy running it. That's the sort of thing you want to be involved in. All right, very good. And then... Um Meteoric Resources, Australian-listed project in Brazil, and it's uh, rare earths. It's rare earths. Yeah, I want to. I want to be in rare earths because you know right now most of the, almost all of it comes out of China, and that's sort of like, you know, a no-no list right now. So if you could have a deposit in a country that where you can bring the metal from, and Brazil is one that I think you will, will be able to. That's number one. Uh, it's permittable ready to go. And the key thing in rare earths is metallurgy. 
It's got to be easily extracted. And this is what they call an ionic clay deposit. So really, all you've got to do is break it up, leach it, and basically you've got the, the end product. And there's, that's it. So yeah, I, that's a great rare earth deposit. I want to have at least one of those. All that's right. I like. Excellent. And we like you when you always come on, come on and uh, great to catch up with you as always. Thank you. All right. Thanks, uh, Brett, uh, Brett Cook, Exploration Insights.